So, Fallout 4 has tons of guns to beat the game with, but what if you wanted to use a bad one? Some would even say it's one of the worst the game has to offer. Today I'll be finding out if you can beat Fallout 4 with only the Acid Soaker, a gun coming from the Nuka World DLC and only being obtained through a prize machine in an arcade. But how bad could the gun actually be? Let's find out! As with most runs, I made my character, but this time I opted to play as Nora to spice things up and then set my stats. Okay, so, luck to five, because we just need to level up, that's honest to god all we can do. Basically, we're just gonna do the idiot savant perk to level up as much as possible, but realistically we're doing it for luck three, which is bloody mess. Because bloody mess seems to be the only thing that actually works with this one. Uh, we're also gonna go Endurance 8, gives us the Cannibalistic perk, and I have a feeling we're gonna have to eat a lot of homies this time. Uh, we don't, like, everything else just doesn't really matter, to be honest. So I think I might just do, I think, job, wait a second, uh, I think I honestly could just do this. Yeah, I think, I think that's okay, because we still get the armor perk, and if we need any other perks for random stuff, then yeah, I think, I think that'll about do it. Now, I ran through the tutorial and skipped killing rad roaches, as we didn't have the acid soaker yet, and almost got killed in the process. But eventually, I made it to Sanctuary and started building sticks while Codsworth cleared the nearby houses. Then, we picked some perks to get us started. Now, it was time to go break into Nuka World. I headed out to find a suit of power armor as the area I was heading into was level 30, and trust me, I was gonna need the extra armor. I had to sneak into a transit area and hassle a guy for a password while I got killed by robots and gunners. But eventually I got lucky and the gunner allowed me to turn the power on and hop on a train in Nuka World. Once I got there it was time to run the gauntlet. Tons of trap filled rooms designed to chew up newcomers. And this wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I just took my time to figure out where turret locations were and defused mines as I went, and then at some points I even ran for my life. All was going well, until I got to a boss fight. A mandatory boss fight. And since I didn't have my gun yet, I didn't stand a chance, so I looked around for a way to leave the area, but I couldn't find one. So I reloaded a save and went back to the beginning of the gauntlet. Because it turns out you can actually clip through the wall as soon as you get off the tram, making it outside and skipping this fight entirely. So now that I was free, I ran straight to the Nuka Arcade and sold all my possessions for some coins to play games. It was about 30 minutes of grinding these games, but I eventually had enough to get my gun. Except when I went to redeem my tickets, I found out my gun wasn't in the machine. Luckily the gun could still be purchased from this machine, I just had to wait a couple days for it to come back in stock, and wait I did. Between sitting on chairs inside and benches outside, I must have waited an entire month of in-game time, about 30 minutes of real world time until my gun was finally obtainable. Except it came with no ammo. No problem, at least I have the gun so I could finally start the challenge, right? So I headed back to the transit terminal to head back to the commonwealth and instead was greeted by a power outage. Okay, no problem. I decided to just load warp back to the commonwealth. For those of you who don't know, load warping is a technique in which you essentially teleport a character further in the game into an earlier save but with their current gear and quest unlock. In Bethesda games it's usually used to skip tons of backtracking or for speedrunning purposes. If you've ever watched my Oblivion videos, I do it in almost every no-kill run, but after trying it in Fallout 4, I just couldn't get it to work. The setup was slightly different than what I was used to, but ultimately the same concept, except after 20 minutes of trying, I was still in the same area and now trapped in the DLC. Or was I? Turns out there was a giant power plant that would be essential to turning on the power for Nuka World, so I decided to head that way. Along the way, I was ambushed by some rad scorpions and lured them to fight other settlers. They fought valiantly, but ultimately met their end. After the heat died down, I finally made it to the power plant and had to sneak and run past tons of ghouls. But even after I made it to the top, I couldn't find the switch for the power. I did eventually find what looked like a switch that would do something big, but since I was clicking it from outside, I don't think the game would allow me to activate it. Also, for some reason, fast traveling wasn't working either, which meant I had to run everywhere while I tried to figure this out. My next stop was heading to a gas station that had a workbench. 
Only problem is, apparently since the power was out, I couldn't use this bench either, which meant I still couldn't make ammo for this gun that I had. How was I going to do this with no ammo? I then headed back into Nuka World once again and found a chem station. Finally, I could just craft ammo and finally get this run moving. Except when I got there, I was hit with the reality that this acid soaker had the craziest requirements to make ammo. You needed 20 pieces of acid, 2 pieces of adhesive, and 8 pieces of glass. 8 pieces of glass was easily attainable because you could just use any bottle lying around. Adhesive was also easy, you could use tape or wonder glue or whatever else was lying around. But 20 pieces of acid? The only thing I had at this point was a one item of Abraxo cleaning supplies. And that only supplied two! I didn't have enough supplies and I had no way to duplicate what I did have. At this point I thought I was so screwed, so I tried the load warp again to see if I had a chance because it was my last resort. Okay, so we want this, right? Okay, and then we're gonna go load, and we're gonna go load this one, cool. And then what we do, apparently, so after we've loaded this one, so this one is like actually loaded in, then we do the spin around open door stuff. I just need to make it back to the Commonwealth. That's literally all I want. So we're still level 10 at this point. Okay, so we're gonna go up and hit. Let's see if that does it. We'll see if that works. If it doesn't, then we'll try it again. I don't have my headphones on, so I have no idea if we've if we're doing it right or not. Considering the music is very calm, I don't think so. We did it! Oh! Oh! Oh my god, we did it! Oh, thank god, the run is saved. Run is saved. Yep, run it back. Oh! And I'm so glad to say it worked. I was back in the Commonwealth, but fast traveling still didn't work. But I wasn't even mad! I ran back to Sanctuary and got to making ammo. 14 levels later and tons of survival perks later, plus some much needed health regeneration, I had a decent amount of ammo for this silly gun finally. Before moving on, I just want to say one thing. With all of the items previously mentioned to make the ammo, how many shots do you think that that actually makes? Considering a full clip of this ammo is 20 shots, you'd think that because you're using 20 pieces of acid, it makes 20 shots, right? Get this, it makes one single shot. So to make a full clip being 20 rounds, you would need about 400 pieces of acid. That's straight up insane. Not only that, but if you reload early, instead of just filling up the current magazine like most weapons do, you lose everything, all stored shots. So for example, if you fire once and reload, you lose the other 19. And considering how little damage this gun does, without knowing how to duplicate materials, this run would take forever just to get the materials to do anything. But with that ran out of the way, let's get back to the playthrough. After doing some investigation, I found out that in Nuka World you had to kill the boss I skipped to be able to fast travel, and since I was still the same character except on a different save, to get my fast travel back I would have to go back to Nuka World and kill him. So that's where I headed next. I broke back in the Nuka world, ran the gauntlet again, and came face to face with the final boss. Now I tried only using the acid soaker to kill him, but he's invincible unless you use the thirst zapper. But since the thirst zapper didn't do damage, and it's required, we'll let it slide this time. With that out of the way, I sprayed the dude full of acid and watched him turn into a puddle on the floor. 
Now with my fast travel back and a new set of power armor, I headed back to Concord to finally help the Minutemen. The Acid Soaker was doing okay damage to the random raiders here, but shooting it felt weird. It was almost like the gun shot at the floor instead of where you aimed. But I did make it to Garvey and then to the roof to clear out the remaining raiders. Once again, these guys weren't so bad. But the Death Claw was something else. This is something that would come up throughout the remainder of the run. Certain enemies took almost no damage from this gun, so I burned through most of my ammo here just fighting this one Death Claw. I must have taken too long because even Garvey finished it off. But with that sorted, I met up with the Minutemen in Sanctuary and could finally play the game normally now. I went on quests through industrial areas, a water purifying plant, and even a haunted quarry. The Acid Soaker was doing okay damage, but at this point I couldn't really rely on the damage over time that it had, so now I was starting to be more liberal with my shots. And that's where a lot of this gun's issues stem from, because most perks in this game don't influence the damage at all. You're stuck doing the same damage the whole game. The only one I could find that actually did anything was the bloody mess perk, and you almost didn't notice it. And this was after also having all the pistol perks maxed out. Because you couldn't modify the gun either, so it was base stats from here on for the rest of the run. After gaining enough rep, it was time to retake the castle, but on the way I found the spot where Nick Valentine was being held up and decided to break him out. The Triggermen still put up a decent fight. I don't know what it is with these dudes, but for people not wearing armor, they still withstood the Acid Soaker. They still went down, but now I was having to use more shots. But considering I was regaining health at almost the same rate they were damaging me, this place was an absolute cakewalk. Between the overboss power armor, my passive healing, and the fact that I had tons of ammo, I wasn't even trying to be smart about this. I got to Nick, and together we blitzed through the rest of the Triggermen, and I agreed to meet back up with him later in Diamond City. But back onto the main mission. I made it to the castle and we began to clear out the Mire Lurks. These smaller enemies weren't so bad and the Minutemen were doing pretty decent damage at this point. Everything was going pretty cruisy until we got to the Queen. The Acid Soaker was doing almost nothing. It was doing damage on initial impact, but I don't think the damage over time was doing anything. I continued shooting, but ultimately the Minutemen ended up putting her down. But I'll still take the credit. And after the retaking of the castle, I went back to doing more Minutemen quests. And more quests still. I've been doing so many quests for these guys, I was pretty sure I knew where I was going. Except I ended up fighting an entire raider camp on a whim that this is what the mission wanted me to do. Only to find out that these guys were actually innocent this time. Whoops. After some more running around, I finally got the old guns quest and could outfit the castle with some big artillery. Now it was time to visit my favorite detective. I told him of my paralysis demons and he suddenly told me about a serial killer. So I kicked a door down and got a dog to smell some drugs. After that I went to go battle some synths at Fort Hagen. The synths weren't that bad, but if they had a suffix on their name, like patroller or something like that, they took a bit to put down. Normally this place is hard, but again with passive healing and power armor soaking up the majority of the damage, I pretty much just sprinted to Kellogg. I then proceeded to stand directly in front of him and spray my acid all over him. Then I headed over to get his brain analyzed, or at least what was left, and went brain diving. Got some info that had me run across Chicago and talk to the friendly green giant about teleportation. But first he said I had to go kill a shitload of army dudes and a courser first. So anyways, I went to Green Tech Genetics and started blasting. The gunners inside didn't pose very much of a threat against the acid soaker. Even though the passive poison was doing almost nothing, it was still at least hurting them. I burned through a bit of ammo and eventually made it to the courser. Normally I'd just use a fat man to one shot him, but this time I went in armed with a spicy water gun and hoped for the best. The courser had some decent health and the passive damage did literally nothing, so thankfully I could just keep shooting him while dog meat held him in place. But this was just one courser and I knew that I'd have to fight tons of them at the castle invasion just up the road, so I wasn't super excited for the future. But with the Corsair chip in tow, I went and got it scanned, got some sick new blueprints, and then built a teleporter, sending me into the Institute to have a very anticlimactic talk with Father. But once back outside, I talked with Preston about taking the fight to the Institute, and he said it was time to stop an invasion. For once, I didn't have to do more Minutemen quests. So finally at the showdown for the castle, it was time to see how little damage I actually did. And to no one's surprise, I didn't do a lot. I came in with almost 1,000 shots and left with under 100. If it hadn't have been for the Minutemen who were overpowered by this point, this could have literally taken forever. 
Luckily most of the enemies stayed still so I didn't miss too many shots and surprisingly this entire fight only took about 15 minutes. Far less time than any of my most recent runs. But with the invasion out of the way it was time to take the fight to the institute. But by fight I meant run through. By this point I knew I would run out of ammo in here so I tried to conserve as much as I could, just running through sections while the Minutemen took care of the rest, and only fighting what I absolutely had to. But I didn't actually realize you pretty much could run all the way to the reactor and just no bout, so I went in with 500-ish rounds and left with a pretty decent amount still left. I didn't really have any issues here and after yelling at my fake son I was left to smack the detonation button and end the run. I can totally see why people say this is one of the worst guns. You can't modify it, so you can't put attachments of other guns or turn it into a mini nuke launcher or anything crazy like that. And since you can't buy the ammo and it can only be crafted, without using duplication it would take forever and be a straight up end game weapon. And since it has bad damage, and that's all you can ever do, all your perks may as well go into survivability, which is what I did here. That's why I didn't go into the build breakdown because all it was was a bunch of wasted perks on pistol things that did nothing and regeneration and damage reduction. If you had to guess what level I finished at, what would you say? 20? 30? 40? To give you an idea, the explosives only run I ended at 33. This time, I was 47. And since I only did the minimum quest needed to complete the game, this high level was solely off having to craft thousands upon thousands of shots. I must have gone through over 50,000 pieces of acid and still it didn't feel like enough. But it's over and done now, so if you want to try this, just know it is completely doable, but why would you want to? If you enjoyed the struggle and want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos. If you have a suggestion for a challenge, let me know down below. And as always, if you want to come watch these playthroughs live, make sure to check out the Twitch link. I'm live every weekend. Thank you all for watching, I've been Chris from Crisis Gaming, and I will see you on the next one.